Good morning, YouTubers. I hope you're having a wonderful day. What happens when you combine this? Highly detailed game pieces of Mecha pulled directly from the Robotech universe. With this. Anything that springs from the human imagination. And this. So you think the Amir Blumenfeld Foundation for not giving is a meaningful project? You end up with a $1.4 million Kickstarter failure. In 2013, Palladium Books ran a successful Kickstarter campaign for their tabletop miniature game. This Kickstarter is to help us build and expand Robotech RPG tactics into a fully realized game. Five years later, Palladium just announced that having failed to deliver the rewards promised to its backers, it's not going to shut down the project. They decided to send whatever remaining game assets they have to the backers, of course, subject to the backers being willing to pay very high shipping costs. And then they liquidate whatever else is left for them. So after years of excuses and delays, all these Kickstarter backers are left with a question of what can they do about this? Some are resigned to the fact that they're not going to get anything, money just down the drain. Others are reluctantly agreeing to pay the high shipping cost to get something anything for this failed project. Well, many just want a refund of the money they paid five years ago. But what does the law say? What are the legal consequences of having failed to deliver on Kickstarter rewards? Are backers just, you know, charitable donors who basically should not be expecting anything in return? Or are there real consequences? Are there legal obligations that companies have to meet regardless of whether or not it's financially beneficial to them? That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about specifically about the Palladium Books failure on Kickstarter and getting the Robotech RPG go game going. But broadly, we're going to speak basically about any sort of Kickstarter failure. As always, if you're interested in the audio track for this video, you can go to Patreon or Maker Support. If you have any questions, any concern, leave them down below, or better yet, show up Tuesday 8 p.m. or Thursday 12 p.m. to the live stream and ask any question you have. I'm looking out from my window. Sun's coming up like the day before. Hi, my name is Leo Lesser. I'm a tech lawyer, and this, this is YouTuber Law. And Palladium first announced that he was going to make a tabletop RPG based on the franchise it started back in the 80s. The fans went crazy. Let's make this happen, guys. Get your copy now. Backers financed the game's production to the tune of $1.4 million, far in excess of the $70,000 originally sought by Palladium. But after years of missed promises, Kickstarter backers were not surprised to hear that the project is being shelved by Palladium. But where does all that leave the backers? For that matter, is there really a contract between a backer on Kickstarter and the company that's raising funds on Kickstarter? Let's start with the terms of use. Kickstarters make each party, both the fundraising company and its backers, sign the same terms of use. In these terms, there is a section that reads, most of our terms of use explain your relationship with Kickstarter. This section is different. It explains the relationship between creators and backers of Kickstarter projects and who's responsible for what. This is what you're agreeing to when you create or back a Kickstarter project. While most terms of use tend to bind parties to the platform itself, this type of terms of use also seeks to bind two independent parties to each other, the backers and the company raising money on Kickstarter. Kickstarter provides a funding platform for creative projects. When a creative posts a video on Kickstarter, they're inviting other people to form a contract with them. Anyone who backs a project is accepting the creator's offer and forming that contract. But is that the end of the story here? It's in the terms of use, therefore there is an agreement. How would that even work? How can Kickstarter cause there to be an agreement between two independent parties, the backers and the company raising money? Well, in fact, it's not enough. The fact that it's in the terms of use, it's not sufficient. We have to actually look at the law to see why there is a valid contract between those independent parties. By law, when, when a company seeks funding and sets up its profile page, and start to promote its project, they're making you an offer. In exchange for a certain sum of money, you will receive a certain reward. That's an offer. When a backer likes you submits funding to the project, he's actually accepting that offer. And when the offer is accepted, the contract is formed. Now in reality, your acceptance of the offer is not immediate. Actually, it's contingent on there actually being a successful funding of the entire project. It's only at the point where your credit card is charged because the project was funded it's at that point that you've accepted the offer. And where have we seen it before? 
eBay, and courts have recognized that as well. In Sayeti versus Walser, a 2007 case, the court found that there is little question as to whether a contract was formed. The mutual assent of the two parties is evidenced through the eBay bidding process, payment, and the ultimate shipment of good. In the eBay terms and conditions, members agreed to abide by eBay policies, which state clearly when a seller lists an item on eBay and the buyer bids for and wins that item, the seller and buyer have entered into a contract. Both members are expected to honor that contract. The same exact legal process takes place on Kickstarter. Okay, so now we understand that there is an agreement between the parties. The law tells us so. But what is that agreement exactly for? Because the agreement, the terms of use, definitely does not give us much information about what is really the agreement between those two parties. And to do that, we really have to look at something, really? outside of the contract itself. In this case, on the profile page. That page effectively details the offer made. And what is that offer actually for? Is it an offer to become a donor without real expectations, just a possibility of a potential reward? Or are you really just pre-buying a product that's gonna come to market hopefully in the future? Which one is it? To see that, you will need to look at the actual pledges made in a specific project. If backers intend to donate to a project in order to help it get off the ground, you would expect a substantial amount of pledges to be made at levels with little to no rewards. On the other hand, if most pledges are intended for the purpose of buying actual products, you would expect pledges for reward levels that include the delivery of the product itself. That means that different projects on Kickstarter may actually be interpreted legally differently than others. Some might be pre-purchases of product, others might be pure donations for people backing up a project. Take a look at the Robotech RPG pledge page. If you add up the pledges, you would find that 99% of all pledges were made at levels that offered at a minimal the boxed game. You see backers of the Palladium book project were not altruistically trying to help a company bring a product to market. They were pre-buying a product. They were funding the production of the very product they wanted to get receive in return. And does risk matter? Does it change anything that we know that there's some risk involved in the pre-purchase of the product? No. The fact that there is a real risk that the company may not be able to deliver on its promises of uh, giving out rewards does not change its obligation to actually deliver what it promised. But how about the fact that the products are not yet manufactured at the time the pledges are made? Does that change anything? No. The contract still is valid even though the products themselves are yet to be produced. Think of Tesla. When you pay for the car, is there a valid contract? Tesla does not start the assembly of the car until you've paid for it. Even then, there's a delay until production actually starts. Is Tesla without any obligation to deliver the car to you because it is yet to be completed? Of course not. The fact that you are paying for a product that is yet to be manufactured does not change the fact that the company is under obligation to deliver it to you. And when a company, any company, including Palladium, fails to deliver on promised rewards, it's in breach of that contract. And when you're in breach of the contract, including a Kickstarter company, when it's in breach of a contract, that means that its backers are entitled to a full uh, refund. Now, does it matter that it had good intentions? Does it matter that it really, really tried to make this work? No, you don't understand. I really tried this time. I, mean, I really tried. Again, no, all the good intentions aside, it does not absolve a company from being required to deliver whatever it promised to the consumer. Now, can it actually deliver some alternative? Can it make it an offer? Look, I can't deliver this, but I might be able to deliver you this. Hey, 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 you want to buy some candy bars so we can get some new uniforms for our baseball team? Where'd you get those candy bars? Well, yes, you can give up your right to whatever you have under the contract with the Kickstarter company. In Palladium's case, they're saying, you know, give up your rights under the contract in exchange for some product that we have in our warehouse, including you paying some high shipping costs. Absolutely, you are allowed to do that. Understand that you're giving up rights you have under the contract in order to accept that, but sometimes it's the only thing you have. Now, the companies, the Kickstarter companies, do not necessarily agree with that kind of an analysis. Usually, Kickstarter companies argue that you are not pre-purchasing product. What you're doing is just helping them manufacture the product. In other words, you're not really buying something. All you're doing is trying to help them bring a product to market. Whoa, Streeter just donated money to my Kickstarter. Hey, no problem, buddy, man. Hope it goes to something good. You were not really buying the Robotech box game. What you were doing is just trying to help Palladium bring that product to market. Now, that makes for an interesting argument. The problem is that evidence shows us otherwise.
Do you remember the Pebble Watch? 96% of the nearly 70,000 backers pledged more than the $99 needed to qualify to receive the actual Pebble smartwatch. We need help to get Pebble onto your wrist. If backers intended just to help Pebble come to market, you would have expected more $1 donations that were minimally eligible to just support the watch. But that was not the case. The pledges were just pre-orders of the watch itself. So if you as a backer of a failed Kickstarter project actually is a pre-purchaser of a product, you can technically sue, sue for breach of contract. Now, that's not usually very practical because usually the amount of money you put into Kickstarter is not enough to justify a full-scale lawsuit. That does not mean that you can't join some class action lawsuit going after the company. Now, the problem with that often is that these are usually self-standing products or project lines or companies, meaning if the Kickstarter project fails, the entire company fails. And that means that you have nothing to go against. The company has no money to waste it at all. There is nothing to go after. Why would you sue if you can't actually win any money at the end of the day? But if a project is run by a company like Palladium that arguably has other streams of income, you can still recover your damages. Palladium, even if it walks away from the Robotech RPG, is still liable for the damages caused by its failure to deliver. Unless, of course, you sign away your rights by agreeing to a resolution like like paying shipping costs to receive a product you didn't really want. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope we provided you with some clarity about what happens when you back a Kickstarter project. If you have any questions, any concerns, anything you want to talk about, just leave them down below. I'd love to talk to you. I'll see you next time. I'm looking out from my window. Sun's coming up like the day before. You're like a stone on my pillow. I don't make a sound when I shut the door.